Hey guys, what's going on? This is Travis P11. I'd like to welcome you back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to do a little tabletop review of the Ruger SR 1911. I've had an opportunity to take this pistol out, put it through its paces, as well as get it all cleaned up. And I got to tell you something, guys, if you're in the market for a 1911 and you don't know which way to go, uh, depending on your budget, I really want you to consider the Ruger for the quality, the craftsmanship, uh, the overall fit and finish, and just how this thing fires at the range. So let's go ahead and just see what comes in the box initially uh, from the factory. Now, I did purchase this pistol in, uh, I believe it was April or May of 2019. I did pay $748 delivered, bought it off a gun broker, and went through uh, SS Pond in Lexington, Nebraska, which is my local FFL. One thing about that really caught me off guard for starters is this very cool hard case that came with the pistol. This was not an extra accessory that I purchased. This is a Flambeau or Flambeau brand hard case. Normally the Rugers of the past that I had purchased uh, only came with plastic or paper boxes. So inside the box, okay, which is really nice because you've got this uh, molded uh, little carriage that everything sits in and some nice foam up on the top to protect it is the uh, 1911 itself You do get a seven round magazine as well as an eight round magazine now because these magazines are such a low capacity uh, You can readily find them on eBay you can find them, uh, you know, pretty much all over the place It will accept any more or less uh, basic government uh, 1911 model uh, Magazine which makes it real easy. So I I think I purchased the uh, additional eight round magazine off eBay for around twenty four dollars and ninety nine cents uh, you also get the uh, barrel bushing tool that is included. That is also included in the box, which makes your disassembly and take down a piece of cake. Uh, little dummy rounds here. These were sent to me by my buddy uh, David Bowling, also known as a Kingpin. Uh, do check out his channel on YouTube. He's got a great channel, and uh, I can use those to practice and dry fire and so on. Uh, we'll go ahead and take the uh, pistol out. Let's go ahead and make sure that it is safety checked. Now we do have rounds in the magazine, but we do not have a round in the chamber. So as you can see, I'll go ahead and dry fire that and put the mag back in. Okay, we'll go and set that off to the side. Another really cool thing about this hard case is you've got an ample amount of storage space underneath. Uh, not so much that I think you could put a box of ammunition in here, but all your documentation, everything you need is going to come with it. You do get a Ruger sticker uh, with it, as well as a great instruction manual that if you're not familiar with the 1911s, it does make uh, takedown and reassembly a piece of cake. Uh, Ruger tends to send really good documentation with their pistols. So real quick, let's just bore you with some of the specifications and some of the features on this pistol before we talk about the accuracy of it. Now, Ruger does offer a variety of different frame sizes if you want the uh, commander style or a different target model, different finishes, different calibers. Ruger has a variety of those. Uh, this particular SR 1911 is the model number 6700. It's chambered in 45 ACP or 45 auto. Uh, capacity is A plus one, does come with the seven plus one magazine and A plus one magazine. Uh, slide material is stainless steel, barrel length is five inches. Uh, the grip frame is low glare stainless. I absolutely love the finish on it. Uh, grip panels are hardwood, uh, model type is standard, so it's your government sized uh, model. Uh, slide finish is low glare stainless. Uh, the width is 1.34 inches. You do have drift adjustable, uh, no back three dot sights, which is really nice. Um, unfortunately, they're not steeped or stepped enough where you could do a one-handed charge if you needed to. Uh, weight is 39 ounces, I'm assuming dry. Uh, overall length is 8.67 inches. Height is 5.45 inches. Uh, six grooves in the barrel, and you've got a one and 16 inch right hand twist. Available in California, no. Available in Massachusetts, yes, with a suggested retail price of $939. Uh, just real quick, some of the features from the uh, Ruger website. You got the classic original 1911 fire control. I believe it's a type of Series 70, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, precision CNC controlled machining process results in superior slide to fa frame fit and smooth slide travel. Uh, positive barrel lockup, traditional design replaceable grip panels. Uh, you do have a skeletonized hammer and titanium firing pin for faster lock time. Uh, oversized beaver tail grip, extended thumb safety. Uh, integral plunger too for slide stop and thumb safety is not staked and will never come loose. Oversized ejection port, um, inspection port so you can see if the firearm is loaded. Uh, flat mainstring housing and uh, rear slide serrations accepts most of your 1911 aftermarket uh, parts and accessories, which I love. And finally, you get the eight round stainless steel magazine and seven round stainless steel magazine and a bushing wrench. All right, so let's go ahead and check out the pistol here. All right, and just uh, real quick, I believe that the trigger pull weight is four and a half pounds, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong on that, so you guys feel free to chime in and correct me if I'm wrong. And uh, the uh, magazines, let's see, you can see a little bit of a difference in the height. There's maybe about, oh, a little bit, a little bit more than a quarter inch difference between the seven round and the eight round magazine. 
All right, so let's go ahead and check this out real quick. Oh, warranty. Uh, Ruger doesn't give a specific warranty on their pistols. It simply says that if you have problems with your pistol during uh, the, the, the lifetime of your ownership, to simply send it in for repair. And uh, from what I've heard, they're very, very good at fixing any kind of repairs for you. And I really have never heard of anybody uh, being billed or charged for their Ruger firearm when they send it in. I know a couple of people that have sent theirs in. And Ruger took care of business, which is good to know, and also made in the USA. All right, so overall, what I was looking for in a 1911, I wanted the full-size frame. Um, I wanted a nice, uh, you know, kind of a non-glare finish, so it would be some sort of a, a matte finish or brush finish, and all the way around, that's what you get when you purchase uh, just the standard model 1911 from Ruger. I wanted the dark wood grips, really didn't care what kind of wood they were, just the dark color, and I was also looking for dark accents. I was hoping I could get a black trigger and hammer, and you sort of do with the, uh, the hammer up on the top, which is skeletonized. It does have some nice uh, serrations in it, but it's just a uh, stainless, uh, finish kind of a brush stainless on the sides also so top to bottom the sights are fantastic I had no trouble getting a great purchase on this firearm at the range and uh, had a nice visual on it when I was using it you can change out the sights if you want to uh, these Novak sights uh, do work just fine I believe that they are metal but like I said before because of the, the ramp on the front you cannot do a single-handed charge if you would need to I don't know how much of a concern that is for people but that is something that people might might care about uh, again nice low glare finish uh, the barrel itself uh, is a little more polished than the slide itself. You do have some nice aggressive serrations on the rear which make it very easy to charge the firearm. No front serration, so if you're somebody that likes to do press checks, it's going to be a little more difficult for you. And you do have a small hole in the top of visual inspection chamber to see if the uh, firearm is in fact loaded and this one is not. Uh, you do get the uh, skeletonized trigger, which is nice. Trigger guard's just your standard shape, standard size. Might have a little bit of trouble actuating the trigger if you have a grip safety. Um, the trigger itself, again, you've got your grip safety on the rear where you grab the back and it allows you to fire trigger just a nice clean break um, it's kind of funny and one of the biggest complaints I read in reviews for this thing is that the trigger was squishy and that it was was not very conducive to accuracy I did not notice that at all I mean I noticed a nice but about, about a quarter inch right here of take up you hit the wall and then she breaks okay reset very short again like another quarter inch and that's pretty much about it and it breaks, okay? Uh, you do not have uh, ambidextrous uh, safeties, which is something that some people do like. They do like an ambi safety, so if you're a lefty, you're gonna have some trouble actuating this firearm or using it the way that you might want to, but again, the safety lever does have some nice serrations up on the top here, which make it a piece of cake to, uh, to actuate the safety if you need to. The slide stop uh, lever is just your standard style, okay? You've got some grooves up on the top there. Nothing too aggressive, but no problems operating it whatsoever. Uh, you do have that nice extended beaver tail off on the back, which is going to prevent from getting a little bit of slide bite. And again, the skeletonized trigger. You do have the blacked out magazine drop and magazines. Let's check it real quick here. Okay, do come clean. They will drop right out for you. There you go. Okay, no problems there at all. Uh, the grips themselves are great. Like I said, you can swap them out if you want to for something maybe a little more aggressive. Uh, but otherwise, you know. Uh, they do work fine for for what they are so the only real complaint that I do have about this pistol and this is real minor but I can see it being an issue for some shooters uh, your front strap of the pistol grip there's no engraving at all there's no stippling in the front here no checkering and after being uh, totally baby by the less bear which has this just amazing like so many like cuts per inch with the Ruger SR 1911 not having anything on there that could be a bit of a problem um, on the rear, you do have some decent uh, checkering, I guess you could say, so the gun does stay planted. So on the front, if you work in a hot or sweaty environment, you may want to consider maybe some skateboard tape on, up on the front or some sort of town grip material. Uh, but that would be probably the only real complaint that I have about this pistol at all. They are. Now again, I just tested a Les Bear 1911 uh, about a month or two ago, and you know while the fit and finish on that is basically superior to this Ruger, the Ruger fit and finish, man, I'll tell you what, I looked at 1911s for six months before I finally decided to get this. You know, I considered everything from the uh, $350 Turkish import T-Sauce all the way up to the $4.5 million Cabot 1911, uh, Meteorite 1911s that, that you can buy. I'm just kidding. There's no way I could afford that, but obviously. Um, your magazine release is not ambidextrous okay nor is it reversible so just keep that in mind again the gun is a little more biased towards right-handed shooters and uh, you do have a little bit of some flaring in the magazine well which assists with re loading and reloading so overall the gun just performed flawlessly I fired five different types of ammo on it if you want to see all the specifics on that test you can go ahead and check out my video it was the um, 
range test on the SR1911. I'll put a link to that video at the end of this one depending if I feature that video yet or not, otherwise you can easily find it on my channel. And uh, accuracy, let's just check out and see how we did here. So, uh, just kind of showing you, in terms of self-defense ammo, I tested uh, Ruger ARX 114 grain in Federal Syntec. The Syntec at 10 yards did uh, 1.6 inches, which is not bad at all. The Ruger ARX was 2.25 inches, so I'm gonna keep the Syntec in the gun for now, although I do a little more practice with that uh, Ruger ammunition which is a different type of round altogether. Um, as for accuracy out of just standard ball ammo, I tested uh, three different types. We had some Federal, 230 grain, which is a 1.7 inch group at 10 yards. And so again, this was, these are the first shots I ever put through this handgun. I did notice with my front sight, I basically have to line up the front sights with this uh, first ring outside of the bullseye in order to pull the shots down. This was me basically aiming right around here and I'm shooting about an inch, inch and a half high at uh, 10 yards. And 10 yards was just that distance where I felt most comfortable shooting where I could get the best accuracy out of the pistol and kind of see where I needed to work from there. Uh, Remington, UMC, 230 grain. I did have one flyer, we're just gonna go ahead and ignore that. And uh, you can see how we did overall right here. Uh, we did have uh, 1.5 inches at 10 yards, which was okay. Best overall, once I finally figured out where to put the sights, and once I got it finally dialed in and tuned the way I wanted it to, punching out the center basically uh, 1.4 inches at 10 yards with Fiocchi. So I know you can sometimes get good deals on Fiocchi ammo, 230 grain bulk. When you're getting it online, now worst case scenario, 25 yards, Fiocchi. Uh, things kind of spread out a little bit obviously, but this is more or less what I would need for what I consider combat accuracy or self-defense accuracy, all right, if I'm just doing a center mass shot. And uh, overall, I mean, the pistol just performed like a champ. What really caught me off guard was how little recoil that I actually felt in the pistol. Maybe it's me just getting used to testing so many different firearms on the channel. But man, I'll tell you what, it was completely comfortable to shoot. I didn't have a lot of lift or climb. The pistol bucked very little in my hands every time I fired it. Uh, double taps, follow-up shots, piece of cake, no problems whatsoever. And I'm very happy that I purchased this 1911. So like I said, when it comes to getting 1911s, I've tested many different brands, you know, Springfield, Taurus, um, Les Bear, um, let's see, Rock Island Armory, Ruger, and I mean, they're all great guns. They all have their, their attributes and features and reasons why you should buy those guns. You know, every every firearm should have a purpose uh, that, that you want to own it for, whether it's just straight up self-defense or you want to go to war gun or you want something for target and plinking. You know, the uh, the world's your oyster when it comes to 1911s. And I don't know why, what it was, but about six months ago, like I said, I just got the bug to pick up a 1911. Um, but like I said, if you want to see the inside of this, you know, check out the fit and finish and see how awesome it really is. Check out my cleaning video. And I mean, just overall, I mean, just there's no there's no marring or marks or rough finish marks on this thing. It's, it's you definitely see why you pay a premium when you pick yourself up a 1911 when you buy this model. And I can't praise it enough. Again, I did purchase this, um, this firearm with a combination of Patreon funds as well as money out of my own pocket and uh, was not given to me or provided by Ruger, and nor am I being paid for this review whatsoever. So there you go, guys. The Ruger SR 1911, a great 1911. You can get a variety of finishes, calibers, sizes, pretty much whatever you want. And uh, I think you're going to see more of this firearm on, on the channel. I am currently looking for a holster for this gun, and I got an idea as to which one I want to, uh, to pick up for, and I'll feature that as soon as I pick it up. Uh, but otherwise, guys, that's it. Hey, thanks for watching us, and thanks for checking out the channel and this series of videos on the SR 1911. I'll put links to those videos at the end of this video. And uh, yeah, so consider picking one up if you don't know where to start. Uh, you know, depending on your budget, anywhere from you know 450 up to 4.5 million dollars, you can get whatever you want for a 1911. So that's it, guys. Uh, make sure you check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, GunChannels.com, GunTube, YouTube. Uh, we're also over there on uh, Instagram. If I had mentioned that yet. But in the meantime, guys, I want you to have fun. I want you to be safe. Uh, make sure you mash that bell, like, and subscribe so you don't miss any updates. And we will talk to you soon. All right, take care and have a good one. All right, bye-bye.